Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. I wanted to do a bit of a uh, battery health update. I'm at a little over 130,000 miles now. I believe I did the last uh, battery degradation update at about 120,000 miles. Uh, so it's been a while, but it's been about uh, 10,000 miles worth of driving. But the last time what I did was I used the, the method where I drive basically from a hundred percent battery down to as low as I can get it reasonably uh, then hook up to a DC fast charger and just check how much energy I used based on the energy display screen uh, and compare it to the percentage of the battery upon arrival and then just use that as a gauge to calculate how much uh, usable energy I would have over a hundred percent of the uh, Bolt EV's battery. But this time I'm actually going to use the Torque Pro app. Uh, for those of the, you that have never used it before, uh, this is a, it's a pay to use app. You hook up uh, to the car using a, an OBD2 uh, dongle, usually some sort of a Bluetooth enabled uh, um, dongle that allows you to connect to the car's uh, ECU and just grab data, right? You're not rewriting anything or you're not doing anything invasive, but you're actually drawing uh, information out using what they call like the PID codes. Uh, and some of them have equations set to them and some of them, you know, you have to, the number that gets kicked back isn't a value necessarily. So you have to uh, enter a formula to, to find out what it actually means, whether it's a voltage or amperage or whatever the case may be. Uh, and in this case, I'm using the PID for a battery capacity and Torque Pro is basically estimating how much usable energy I have. Now, you know, just loading up the screen and looking at it, uh, I'm at a little over 60% battery, 61.6% uh, uh, battery. And, uh, you know, I drove down to this, uh, this state of charge. But according to Torque Pro right now, I have 56 kilowatt hours of usable capacity, which is actually more than what I had calculated uh, when I had done it the other way where driving down to a lower state of charge and then hooking up. Uh, but the other thing is this, I, I plugged this in just to test to make sure Torque Pro was working maybe a thousand miles ago uh, and it was reading 56.4 kilowatt hours and uh, that's one of the reasons why I never really relied on this or never really used it um, is the variance seemed a lot higher than what I was seeing when I would do a degradation test by driving the Bolt EV to a low state of charge and measuring actual usable energy um, but even that had its own variance right one you know one kilowatt hour plus or minus uh, usable energy uh, so I always had to sort of balance that out and winter months right we're getting into the colder time of the year uh, tended to to kick back lower energy uh, readings than uh, summer months so there's also variance built in there and some people on some of the Bolt EV forums mentioned well you can use the Torque Pro uh, and then just measure or compare multiple data points over time and, and you'll get sort of that you'll paint the sort of same picture or graph of usable energy over time as you know what you're getting uh, from actually driving the car down to zero so just using two different methods, uh, y you might actually arrive at very similar numbers. Like I said, this is off by about half a kilowatt hour from the last time I loaded up Torque Pro, and it's off by another half kilowatt hour from what I actually measured uh, driving the car down to a low state of charge and then comparing the usable energy to what the DC fast charger showed. But either way, it's all st sort of in the same ballpark and 56 kilowatt hours of usable energy would represent a little bit less than 7% uh, battery degradation from 60 kilowatt hours usable in stock form uh, after basically four years and 130,000 miles. So yeah, I'm looking at pretty close to 7% to degradation. Uh, but while I have Torque Pro loaded up, I wanted to go over a few of the values. So as you can see, I have a pretty busy screen and um, 
you know, I, I include a lot of the things from like the, the battery uh, percentage as displayed on the driver instrument uh, panel, uh, just uh, doing a quick comparison of what 61.6% .6 looks like on Torque Pro versus what it looks like on the actual DIC display. Um, you know, you can, you can tell there's a, it, what, what the Bolt EV does is the green bar basically lasts until it's completely gone and then uh, you know, so there's a there's a five percent uh, variance in what you're actually seeing, or I guess really closer to a four percent variance in what you're seeing on the DIC versus what the battery actually has, uh, which is why some people say, suddenly see they lose five percent. Well, they didn't lose five percent. Uh, suddenly, they they had already notched down into that lower five percent um, uh, gradient, and they didn't realize that they were you know already used it up, and then it dropped down again. So, uh, but uh, you know, currently it's 360 volts. That's the overall pack voltage. But you'll notice I also have things like the battery pa uh, pack temperature. Uh, that's something to monitor to. to basically understand how how quickly the car can charge um, and what the battery is uh, and then you'll notice like I have all of the cell groups and for some reason I have I guess cell one here um, but if I scroll through right and I and I go from the very beginning um, I have all of the cell groups and when I say cell groups essentially the Bolt EV has uh, lithium-ion cells in three parallel and so those three cells together equal a cell group and they're approximately a hundred and uh, 171 amp hours is what I think was the quoted rate for them um, which would, would basically be 57 amp hours per cell but three of them combined is 171 um, but uh, but the voltage will remain the same because they're in parallel and uh, the voltage range on the Bolt EV, it's fairly broad. It's a little bit more than one volt from empty to full, uh, but you basically can go down to maybe 2.8, 2.9 volts on a cell level and up to 4.16, 4.17. As you can see, we're sort of in the middle of the pack. And then uh, the other thing is too, uh, when I look at these numbers, and this is uh, you know in reference to the new Bolt EV recall, right, based on the battery, um, there's, a, there's a fairly high amount of variation in the voltages, but what's also interesting is it's uh, consistent across multiple Bolt EVs. If I were to look at my uh, cell group voltages and compare them to another Bolt EV, uh, you'll see a very similar pattern among 2017, 2018, and 2019 Bolt EVs that were built in Korea. Uh, and you don't actually see that same variance on the uh, Bolt EVs with packs that were assembled in the United States, uh, which is an indication that that ha could have something to do with the battery recall and uh, uh, why you know there's maybe a, a potential fire risk for the ones that were assembled in Korea uh, but uh, but yeah because if you look through this uh, right there for the most part the cells are around 3.76 volts right uh, but and anything into the thousands is it's going to vary so much as to almost not be usable or or, or valuable but if, if you notice though um, if I scroll through uh, there will be you know like I said some that are 3.76 some that are 3.77 but then you will find some like now in in the 60s right like so like cell group uh, 65, cell group 69, um, cell group 70, cell group uh, 66, now all of a sudden that's at, at 3.75. So that's a two hundredths of a volt variance uh, between the highest uh, cell groups and the lowest cell groups. And that's actually a trigger warning to note that something is you know possibly wrong or the battery isn't completely balanced there could be certain issues uh, with certain cell groups not balancing properly could eventually lead to overheating that sort of thing so um, that's I think what GM is looking at that's what a lot of the Bolt EV owners who've been following and tracking uh, their cell group voltages uh, have been wondering about if this is one of the contributing factors and so yeah that's that's kind of what we're using Torque Pro for right now uh, like I said, it's it's a handy tool. It's something that I use a lot 
um, or at least I used to use a lot more. Right now, like I said, I was just doing a quick capacity test, but I also wanted to, to just kind of note how Torque Pro works, um, you know, what I do with it. I'll put a link to uh, the PIDs and what you can download and load into your system. Uh, but it's a pretty helpful tool. It's pretty easy to use, and uh, and it can give you kind of a bird's eye view into your, uh, into your battery. And like I said, right now, um, again, this is pretty consistent in results, about a 7% degradation after 130,000 miles and um, four years of ownership. So uh, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was informative. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.